What's up guys, this is your boy Clifford Che here with the season one and episode two of Cliff Speaks with somebody very important that I know you guys are gonna love. But before we even get into that, if today's your first time on my YouTube channel, please don't forget to give my videos a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channels mainly, please do that for me, comment down below, and share my videos with your friends and family. With all further ado, let's get into the video. So, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Sami Ajay Jr. And boys, thank you for having me. No problem, man. Thank welcome you, to my home. Thank you. I, we, we went through a lot to get this video done, but we're finally here and we're doing it. So, what, what's going on? What's up? Nothing much, man. You know, just home. Been enjoying the vacation, you know, so it's been fun being back in the country and relaxing a little bit. So. Right. So, because right now you, you're here from Denmark, right? Yes. Yeah, he's actually playing with a soccer team in Denmark and... He's on a break right now, so he's back in the U.S., New Jersey, and we like when he's back, <laughs> you know, but he's about to leave, like, soon, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Time is up. I have to get back to work for preseason, so. Yeah, soccer, soccer is life, guys. <laughs> Even though I'm, I'm like, high school level, <laughs> but him, he's up there, so, but still, soccer is soccer life. Soccer is life, soccer for, is sure, life. for sure. So, um, let's get into this question. My first question that I, like, I have is that, like, what made you get into soccer, period? Uh, my dad, man. My dad, you know, he played, you know, grew up watching him play. So I always wanted to emulate that and, like, just see what I could do with the sport myself. And mm -hmm. once I realized that it was actually a talent of mine, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to see, you know, what level I could take it to. Okay. Yeah. So, like, um, I I, I, we, I know you. It's not even like I did a research. <laughs> I know you, and I know that you play for the New York Bulls, right? right. And what I want to know is that how did you get in contact with that? How, did you, how were you able to play for New York Bulls? Uh, yeah, so I got scouted. I was playing for Den of Lions, and um, I was attending St. Benedict's Prep in Newark, New Jersey, and I, I got scouted to play for New York Red Bulls, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just by watching games and seeing what players were doing well, they, you know, they try to get all the best players over right. to the club, so that's right. how I ended up there. Right, so what I switch, which is which is good, um, and I'm happy that you actually mentioned St. Benedict's Prep because St. Benedict's Prep is a good school. So obviously, we all know that you're a professional soccer player now, and I want I want to ask you, what is it like to be a, a professional soccer player? Um, it's it's it has its you know ups and downs, but it's it's a lovely job, and just right. knowing I can wake up every day and just go play soccer, and you know. Cause it's what I love to do anyway, you know. Okay. But, you know, there are times when it does feel like a job, and okay. that's when you really okay. have to, you know, remember the reason why you started playing it, right. and always try to motivate yourself and remember why, you know, mm -hmm. soccer is fun for you. Okay. That way, it never feels like a job. Right, right, and you're definitely right. Cause when you start to do something for a long time, it's, it starts to be part of you. Yep. And one thing is, a lot of people that, a lot of people that's like my age, are young people that actually want to get into young, um, they'll actually want to get into professional. You know, sports and maybe soccer, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And what advice will you have for them, Blake? I mean, I think work ethic is a big thing, and uh, the more you practice your your craft, the better you're gonna get at it. So I mm -hmm. think, um, yeah, their work ethic has to be, you know, actually really exceed expectations, and they have to just work hard and listen, listen to their coaches and whoever is in charge of them, and really just. One setback doesn't mean you're not going to make it, you know, right. and one no right. doesn't mean you're not going to make it. You have to right. be relentless in pursuing your goals and just always keep pushing yourself. Definitely. So that's one, right. that's definitely something you'll have to right. keep in mind. Right, and, and connecting that back to the professional playing soccer, you know, um, we all know that you play for the United States, you know, under 14 and under 18, under 18 yeah. soccer team. Yes. And what was it like? And what, what like, what was it like? Just tell me about that. I want to know. And I'm pretty sure they want to know about that because that's a big deal to play for United States under 18, right? Yeah, it was it was a great experience, man. When you get to the national team, you're mm -hmm. meeting the best players from every team, mm -hmm. you know, every club team. And it's like when all the best players get together, it's very competitive. Everybody right. aspires to win. And, you know, you really just try to learn from everybody else while still showcasing your own talent right. and try to, trying to stand out. So mm -hmm. it was a great experience, man. We went to mm -hmm. Mexico. We, went, we took a few different trips and played a few games and... I really learned a lot from my time with the U.S. national team. Which I know, I know you had a lot of fun with them, mm -hmm. and you also played for Ghana um, national team, yeah. um, which is under twenty, right? Yeah. Under 20. Um, and I want to, I want to know what it's like too, and what is the difference between and playing for the Ghana national team under twenty and playing for United States, you know, national team as well. I mean, I, I was born and raised in Ghana, you know, and uh, yeah. my dad played for Ghana, and mm -hmm. when I got called up to the under twenty national team, I hadn't been home in about eight years so right. it was my first time going home so mm -hmm. i just felt this immediate connection to the motherland you know just being home and seeing my family again and mm -hmm. just playing and in ghana it's 
we're training and there are about 200 people just watching practice. It's right. not even the game, it's just right. practice, you know? Right. Stuff like that really encourages you and you can tell you're really representing, representing the whole nation. Right. Right. Everyone is behind you. And uh, like the difference between uh, playing for USA U18 and Ghana, you know, mm -hmm. and representing Ghana as well as, um, I think in Ghana, the, you know, just our culture and our way of living, the team spirit. So like before games, we huddle up, we pray together. Right. You know, we right. sing songs together on the way to the game. Jama, 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 you know, jama. On the way to jama, <laughs> you know, jama on the way to practice. And, right. uh, compared to USA where we're going to games and everybody has their headphones in. Yes. You just listen to whatever you listen focused. to. Yeah. But with right. Ghana, we're all singing songs. By the time you get to the stadium, you're already mm -hmm. warmed up. You're already hyped for the game. Right. That's the difference. Right. And, 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 and. I, it's, it's lovely hearing the difference, and now I know that you play in Denmark, and I, I just want to know, I just want to know, if you was to compare those three, which one would you say you would like to play for the rest of your life? Wow. I mean, uh, it's a tough question right now, mm -hmm. you know, as I'm eligible to play, to represent both USA and Ghana, right. but, uh, you know, I love Ghana, and I, uh, I just have this special connection to them, you mm -hmm. know, that, you know, mm -hmm. that's just from being born there in my family, so. I'll probably say Ghana at the moment. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I'm pretty sure if some people are watching right now, they may necessarily not be going through this, but they had no somebody that's going through this. And I, I've been on the soccer team myself on my school, and I know how to feel um, when 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 you feel like you're not needed for the team. Yeah. When you feel like okay, you're not good enough. So if somebody's watching right now and then they they want to go out there, soccer is their passion. They want to be big in soccer, but it's like. They have other people that's better than them on the team, or the team just don't see the person talent at all. Yeah. What will you say to encourage that person? Okay. Well, as a soccer player, as an athlete in general, you always have to believe you're the best. Right. You don't have to say it out loud, but mentally, mm -hmm. you always have to tell yourself you're the best, and mm -hmm. you have to work hard and continue to improve every day. Okay. And you know, sometimes you know you see a player go from one team and not play at all, and then go to another team mm -hmm. and be really successful. Right. And so you just you can't give up. That's the one thing because you never know how close your breakthrough is. Mm -hmm. And if you if you're really struggling on, in one team, you have to just kind of just keep your head down, and continue to work hard, mm -hmm. and you know just look forward always. Just take the positives all the time and just leave the negatives. Right. You really need to have a short term mem memory being that way. Mm -hmm. So you know anything is possible. Okay, and um, to get back, you know, um, what what is something that if I was to ask you, what is something that you you're doing for the community, or what is something that you like, or you love just doing it for the community and just helping people out? What is it exactly? Uh, well, right now I'm I'm in the process of like coaching and getting on my licenses, and I love working with kids, and uh, right. I feel like I have a special connection with kids, and mm -hmm. you know, right now I just work with them, coaching, and just. Because I feel like outside of the home mm -hmm. and school, kids still need a positive environment to grow in. Definitely. And soccer is Definitely. one way to, I know Definitely. it helps keep kids off the street and, do. and ways do. and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that's what I've been doing right now. And as, you know, time goes on, I want to open my own type of academy, right. you know, for kids maybe right. in Ghana, maybe here, right. you know, and just um, help kids get off the street because soccer can do a lot for you. Mm -hmm. you know? I can, I can. I've seen a lot of medals here. I've seen a lot of trophies. <laughs> And I was curious, like, how many trophies or medals did you get, like, in your whole life? Like, how many trophies do you have? Yeah, man, I, ca I can't really count how many trophies, um, you know, and a lot of them have been sent to Ghana, so mm -hmm. my little cousins can, you know, have in the house, and that's right. something they also have to, you know, show. Right. To know that, you know, they have somebody who's also working hard for all okay. the family, and I, um, it's definitely a good feeling because, uh, you know, it just, it kind of represents my hard work, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's really, you know, it's a good feeling to, to have trophies and medals. Right. Every athlete wants them. I just want you to give a motivation out, um, not just soccer related, not sports related, for the YouTube and the people out there in general. Just any motivation that comes to your mind right now. I just want you to motivate people right now. Okay, well, I know that, you know, at times, you know, the world is a little bit crazy right now and, um, Whatever you're doing, I just all I can say is just stay focused on yourself and try to improve yourself and don't don't lose sight of your goals because um you know it's it's very easy to get distracted and sidetracked with things that are not gonna affect you in five years, ten years. Mm -hmm. So right now, whatever you do, make sure you're setting yourself up for the long term and um, okay. just enjoy life as well. Don't let life pass you by. Mm -hmm. um, take every day as it comes because tomorrow's not promised and. Mm -hmm. You know, just wake up, have fun, do what you do with a smile on your face, try to be the best at it, and, uh, you know, continue chasing your dreams. Right. Oh, bars. I need, I need to have them. <laughs> I need to have them on my motivational side on my YouTube a lot. Because that was some bars right there. But 
if um, somebody want to find you, if they want to find you and just stay in contact with you, watch your videos, see your highlights, where can they find you? Uh, my website is uh, sammyaj.com. Um, so I guess he'll write it up there somewhere. Um, this video over there, or I'll put it. On the, all right, let me tell you something. I'll definitely put it in the description box below. So if you're having any trouble, just go in the description box and all his information will be in there. My website, my Instagram, my Twitter is all there. And I like to, um, I, I do a lot of blogs and journals on my website mm -hmm. as well. And, uh, mm -hmm. So we, we might have something coming, you know, in store stay for you guys. Stay tuned for that. So stay tuned. We're not going to spill it yet, but just stay tuned and just know that we have something coming. So I, I guess this is the end of this interview and it was great having you on this channel today. Welcome to my home. Man. <laughs> right, I loved fun, it, man. I loved it. This, I love this interview and I finally can't wait to say that y'all know this professional soccer player that went crazy, then messy. <laughs> I had an interview with him. So just stay tuned and I thank you so much, you know, for being here. And we actually was planning to do this for a long time. And he's busy, I'm busy, but we finally got it done. And I think that is it, right? Yeah, man, thank you so it. much, bro. No problem, thank bro. you, thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, guys. Please don't forget to comment down below what, your, what was your favorite part about this video. And also, comment down below who, who you would like for me to interview in the next Cliff Speaks episode three. Just comment down below someone you would like to see on this show, and I will reach out to them, and I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna love it. Because I love this one, and I know you're gonna love the next one that I have coming soon for you guys. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. You know, share with your friends and family. Share on other videos with your friends and family. And I, I know you guys loved it. I'm not even gonna ask. I know you guys loved it. Don't forget to do something, make it happen, be blessed, be yourself, and be happy. Peace. Um, hey guys, it's your boy Beams, and welcome <laughs> to Beams Life Sanctuary. <laughs> Sanctuary. <laughs> yeah. What is what is Beams Life Sanctuary, bro? Is is a just a YouTube show uh -huh. where. I take everything from the outside, inside scoops, and bring it all into one camera. Okay. Yeah. Beam Sanctuary. So, the first episode, today's episode, is the one episode one <laughs> of Beam Sanctuary <laughs> will be about. Uh, okay. <laughs> he said, okay. <laughs>